The main crop harvest will be completed around April 15th, after which we'll start planning for the second harvest. I am working on compacting the silage with a high quality cover to ensure excellent results. The goal is to keep the margin of error at 2 to 3 percent, with 2 percent being considered ideal. I always say I have the best team in the world because we are achieving an accuracy rate of around 99.8 to 99.7 percent. Jesse sent a message saying that he won't be making videos anymore because you haven't subscribed to the Santa Fe channel. So subscribe now and he will continue recording on farms around the world. My name is Gustavo and I am the nutrition coordinator at Colorado Farm. We are currently in the grass silage production area, specifically working with pre-dried forages, cultivated over approximately 150 hectares, including both Tifton and Coast Cross varieties. The process works as follows. We mow the forage in the field, and the material is left for about two hours, using an implement that spreads it across the ground to accelerate drying. After this period, we use a windrower to form windrows, and the forage is then harvested and chopped. Our goal is to work with a dry matter content between 38 and 42%. Regarding chop length, we aim for approximately 16 to 18 millimeters, and on the particle size separator, we target the following distribution, around 20% on the top sieve, about 19 to 8% on the intermediate sieve, approximately 60% on the next level, and 20 to 30% on the bottom sieve. We began harvesting in mid-January, and since then, we've had several intervals due to weather conditions. This week happens to be one of those intervals. So it's a strategic opportunity for us to advance forage harvesting, as the summer crop arrives very close to the main harvest window. We expect to complete this cycle by around April 15th, after which we will begin planning for the second crop harvest. This is the truck that brought in the forage and is currently unloading into the silo. Today, we are working with a bunker silo, surface silo, and ideally, for every one meter of height, we should maintain four to five meters of width. Although this type of forage presents some challenges, as it tends to have a higher dry matter content and more structural fiber than corn silage, we focus our efforts on maximizing compaction. We use a high quality plastic cover, which is essential to achieve good fermentation and ensure optimal nutritional value when the material is later fed to the animals. We are currently in the maternity area specifically the prepartum sector, where we work with a fully anionic diet protocol, 100%, primarily due to management efficiency and safety. At the moment, we offer two feedings per day, and we have three separate groups within this sector, a group of dry cows, this group of heifers, and further ahead, a group of animals close to calving. Next to the heifer group, we have the calving pens. As mentioned, we maintain a fully anionic diet in this entire sector, including the prefresh groups, mainly for logistical practicality. These two daily feedings are carefully managed. The staff in this sector operate in three shifts, remaining on site throughout the day. They are also responsible for pushing up the feed, relieving the main nutrition team from this task. By keeping the feed close to the animals, they stimulate intake, which is critical in this challenging phase, especially in the cross ventilation barn. This daily stimulus helps optimize dry matter intake, which is a key objective during the transition period. We are currently in the feed storage area, a warehouse where we store several ingredients that are consumed in high daily volumes. The goal here is to ensure proper storage conditions in order to preserve feed quality and prevent nutrient losses. One of the main ingredients stored here is whole cottonseed, which we are currently using at a rate of nearly six metric tons per day. Toward the back, we have citrus pulp, for which we started stockpiling last year, and we are now approaching the end of that reserve. Current consumption of citrus pulp is around seven metric tons per day. We also use this shed to store hay bales. Some of the hay is produced on the farm and the rest is purchased externally. We also store soybean hulls, which are used in heifer diets, and we keep some equipment and implements here in this feed management area. This is our main feed storage facility, and our daily hay usage is approximately 500 kilograms. Each bale weighs around 200 kilograms, and the hay is typically 90% dry matter. 
We include this material in some grower diets and also in the postpartum diets. We are now in the heifer rearing sector, where animals are being prepared for reproduction, including some that have already been inseminated. Feeding in this sector is done twice daily, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. Since it is not feasible to weigh feed refusals here due to logistical limitations, we manage feed adjustments by assessing the feed bunk score early in the morning. In this sector, we aim for approximately 3% refusals, which corresponds to a feed bunk score between 2 and 3 on a 0 to 5 scale. Each morning we evaluate the feed bunk condition, and the quantity of feed delivered to the animals is adjusted based on this assessment. We are currently in the central feeding hub of the farm. As we mentioned earlier, this area is connected to the upper storage shed, as well as to the forage silage areas, which include corn silage, sorghum silage, and grass silage. Here, we also have a mineral storage shed and four grain silos, which are currently deactivated. We are planning to reactivate them, possibly to be used for heifer feed storage. We have a 30 cubic meter mixer wagon used for feeding the lactating cows, and behind it, a 19 cubic meter self-propelled mixer used for maternity diets. The self-propelled mixer is the main unit we use to prepare and deliver feed in that area. At the center of this feeding sector, we also have a front loader, which is responsible for loading all ingredients into the feed mixers. As we move toward the open bay area, we find different commodity bays. The first bay is stocked with chopped hay coming from the upper hay shed we visited earlier. We also have space allocated for barley. Two open bays for whole cotton seed, one for citrus pulp, and one for ground corn, which we keep available in case of urgent supplementation needs. We will discuss the ground corn silo in more detail shortly. In front of us, we have four soybean meal silos. The first silo contains bypass soybean meal, and each silo has a storage capacity of 52 metric tons. So, the first silo holds bypass soybean meal, while the other three silos are filled with regular soybean meal. Also located in this area is the heifer feeding mixer wagon, which had been out of use and stored. We are currently using an 18 cubic meter unit as a temporary replacement for the 22 cubic meter mixer, which is undergoing maintenance. Now we are moving toward the corn grinding sector of the farm. This is the ground corn production area, where we have two large grain silos, each with a capacity of 1,500 metric tons. From those large silos, the grain is transferred to a smaller silo with a capacity of 21 tons, which serves as the pre-grinding reservoir. From there, the grain is fed into a 50 horsepower mill where it is ground into fuba and stored in a 32 ton silo. Currently, the farm's daily consumption of ground corn is around 16 to 17 metric tons. The daily feeding routine for the lactating cows begins at 4.30 a.m. At this time, the first feeding is delivered, and the entire sequence follows a well-defined schedule. Currently, we work with three different diets in the lactation barn, a high production diet, the diets for groups four and five, and the postpartum diet. The sequence is organized as follows. We begin with a mixer load for the postpartum group, followed by a load of the diet for groups one, two, and three, which is delivered first to barns one and three. Then, another load of the diet for groups one, two, and three is delivered to barn two, followed by one load for groups four and five, and then another for groups one, two, and three. To finish the morning feeding, we deliver one more load for groups four and five. In our nutrition team group chat, once the person in charge of collecting feed refusals sends the maternity feed data, the morning feeder immediately proceeds to prepare the maternity diet, which refers to the prepartum group. Sometimes this feeding is done before the second to last or last load of the morning. In the afternoon, the sequence begins again with the postpartum group, followed by a load for groups one, two, and three, then another for groups three and four, and right after that, another maternity feeding. At night, two loads are delivered for groups one, two, and three, one at the start of the night shift, and the second as the last load of the night. Between these two feedings, 
one additional load is prepared and delivered. As I always say, in order to deliver this level of performance, we must rely on a well-trained, motivated team who understands what they are doing and remains focused on results. We use an application that monitors the margin of error for each ingredient, both during ingredient loading and feed delivery to the animals. In most dairy operations, teams strive to maintain a margin of error of around 2%, which is already considered very good. But I always say I have the best team in the world because here we consistently operate with an accuracy of around 99.7% to 99.8%. And that level of precision is only possible thanks to the people, motivated individuals, who are committed to excellence on a daily basis. Speaking a bit about feed refusal management, here is how we handle it on the farm. Refusals are collected from within the lactation barn as well as from the maternity area and calf barn too, which we will visit shortly. All of this leftover feed is reused in a structured way. Once collection begins, the material is sent to dry cow lots 9 and 10, located outside the main barn. Refusals are also distributed to heifer lot 21 and to lot 18, which contains animals that transition from calf barn 2 to the heifer rearing phase following weaning. Any remaining refusals, that is, what is left after reuse, are stored in the heifer sorghum silo so that the employee in charge of heifer feeding can use them for animals in the reproductive preparation phase. Here in the lactation sector, we typically operate with around 5% feed refusal. In the transition groups, including both postpartum and prepartum animals, we allow for a slightly higher refusal rate of 8% to 10% to support optimal intake and physiological adaptation during this critical period.